Good morning, young friends, and welcome to our St. Bart's Children's Homily. My name is Pal, and I'm so excited that you are joining me today with your fellow Sunday School learners. As we begin our children's service today, I invite you to listen to our morning song. This week, our song is called Every Move I Make. CJ and friends dance along to this one. Maybe you can pick up some of their dance moves and join them at home. This is a worship song, or one that sounds kind of like pop music. Get your groove on this morning and click on the link in the video description down below so you can set your minds and bodies ready to worship, pray, and learn. Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed our morning song. In this next part of our service, we will light a candle together. In this Easter season, we are focusing on prayer and discipleship. After we prepare our sacred space by lighting a candle, I will read a short verse from the book of Psalms to center our minds and spirits for worship. If you have a candle in a special altar space at home, you can light yours with me. I call on you, God, for you will answer me. Turn your ear to me and hear my prayer. Today in our church calendar, it is the sixth Sunday of Easter. We are in a time between Easter and Pentecost, and Pentecost is just two weeks away. Over the past few weeks, we have been talking about discipleship, aka how to be followers of Christ. We have particularly been focusing on how prayer and service are important as we try to be better disciples. Prayer is how we talk to God. It's how we say, thank you, and please help, and wow, God, this amazing thing happened to me, and I want to tell you all about it. And finally, it's also how we say, I'm sorry. There are many ways to pray, and I will teach you a new way later on in our homily. We've also been talking about service, how we can serve, help, and show love to other people. One special way that you can do that this year is by helping create some care kits for people in need as part of our spring service project. There are five different kits that you can put together and drop off at St. Bart's. Don't forget you have until May 28th to participate in this project. If you have any questions, have your parents send me an email. The last thing I want to mention in our liturgical calendar is Ascension Day. This coming Thursday is what we call Ascension Day. This is a holy day, the day Christians believe Jesus rose into heaven all those many, many years ago. So let me remind you of the timeline. A few days before Easter, Jesus is killed. He is crucified. But then, three days later on Easter, he rises from the dead. After that, he teaches his disciples and spreads the message of God's love. And now, on Ascension Day, his body rises into heaven, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father. You might recognize those words from the Nicene Creed that we say in church sometimes. Ascension Day marks the end of the Easter season. It is 10 days before Pentecost, which I will tell you about next week. But for now, let's curl up on the couch and grab our Bibles. It's time for our scripture lesson. Today's lesson comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. I'll give you a minute to locate that part of your Bible. In the meantime, I'm going to jam out to our theme song. Okay, John, chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. I loved you as the Father loved me. Now remain in my love. I have obeyed my Father's commands, and I remain in his love. In the same way, if you obey my commands, you will remain in my love. I have told you these things so that you can have the same joy I have. I want your joy to be the fullest joy. This is my command. Love each other as I have loved you. The greatest love a person can show 
is to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I don't call you servants now. A servant does not know what his master is doing. But now I call you friends, because I have made known to you everything I heard from my father. You did not choose me. I chose you. And I gave you this work to go and produce fruit. I want you to produce fruit that will last. Then the Father will give you anything you ask for in my name. This is my command, love each other. Here ends the reading. All right, I bet you know the big idea of our lesson, even without me telling you. Hmm, does it begin with L and end with E? Yes, it was even mentioned nine times in our lesson this morning. Indeed, it is love. Just days before Jesus ascends or goes up into heaven, we are reminded of the biggest lesson Jesus wants us to know. Love each, love other. each other. Jesus gathered his disciples around him to talk about love. There is nothing more important than love. And Jesus wanted the disciples to know how much they were loved. Not only were the disciples loved, but Jesus loved all people. And he knew that following his commandments helps us to share the love of Jesus with others. One of those commandments is love one another. Another commandment was to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And to love your neighbor as yourself. The more we understand God's love for us, and the more we share it, the more joyful we will be. The greatest love is laying down your life for your friends. That's exactly what Jesus did. He did that for us. He never treated people like his servants. He treated them like his friends. Jesus chose the disciples and he chooses us. He wants us to feel his love and he also wants us to share it. That's how we say thank you to Jesus for loving us by loving others. So I don't have much of a message today, my friends. Just one big reminder to love others. It is the most important thing you can do. The trickier part may be to figure out what love looks like. There are different kinds of love. Sometimes we show affection. We might hug or kiss those we love, often our family members and closest friends. Sometimes we write messages or send gifts to those we love, especially those who are far away from us. Or we might offer to help someone with something. Like, have you ever asked your teacher if you can help pass out papers? Or maybe wipe down desks with cleaner, especially during COVID? Or have you helped someone mow the lawn or shovel snow or rake leaves? These are all ways that you can show love. Sometimes we also show love a little secretively. We leave a surprise treat on someone's desk. Or we create kits for other people who we don't know and who don't even know us. Love can also be shown when we comfort or listen to a friend who is crying or sad. And finally, love can be like hosting a party for someone's birthday or just having a friend over for a sleepover. Love can mean thinking about or praying for someone too. Sometimes we send a text message or leave a voicemail for someone that says, I love you, or you mean a lot to me, and you've been on my mind. So as we head into this next week, I invite you to consider these reflection questions. First, what does love mean to you? What does the word mean? What does love look like? Secondly, have you shown others and yourself love lately? Take some time to think about how you can show your love to the special people in your life. And what about showing love to yourself? Can you take care of yourself in a new way this week? And lastly, Jesus loves you. Jesus loves everyone. You are loved no matter what. What does Jesus' love mean to you? Who is Jesus and why does his love matter? Take your time and consider these questions and suggestions. Write down your answers, your thoughts, your doodles, or questions in a notebook. Remember, asking questions is good, and don't be scared to ask someone that you trust about your questions. You never know where it might lead you. 
Okay friends, now it's activity time. As you know, people of faith have always used prayer to strengthen them and to keep them going. One of the ways we can care for each other is to pray. We often pray for our family, our neighbors, friends, and even enemies. We can also pray for ourselves. Today, our friend Creative Christian is going to teach us how to make prayer beads and learn a way to use them in our prayers. Take a look. Hello everybody, my name is Creative Christian and as Pal said, I am here to teach you how to make some prayer beads. So this activity will require beads, number one. Uh, it would also require string or wire or twine, um, something that will fit through the beads. And you'll also want to make sure that you might have some scissors on hand. So ask your family if you have any of these materials around and if not, make sure you see if you can buy them. You could also see if your friend has any that you could borrow. So making these beads and praying with them is a great way to help us focus and concentrate our attention, especially as we pray. Your prayer beads will end up looking something like this. Pretty cool. So what you're gonna need are 28 small beads, those light blue ones. There are 28 of them split up into four sections. These sections are called weeks. And then you have these four larger blue beads here, which are they form a sort of a cross, right? Like a crucifix. So those are called cruciform beads. Um, then you want one extra one of those because this is called an invitatory bead or something like an invitation. We're inviting you in to start praying. And finally, we have this cross down here. This is just the cross bead. Okay, what you're gonna wanna do is take a, an arm's length of string and then start with the cross and feed it all the way through to the middle. And then you might need to do some fancy little knotting just to make sure that it hangs the way it should. Then you wanna put these two beads in and, and with each one you wanna feed the string from both sides. I knotted it between each one. And then on one side of the string, you start to loop all of these on the right hand side and then all of these on the left hand side. And you'll put a cruciform bead in the middle of each of the, of the two weak sections. So you have seven light blue beads, a dark blue bead, seven more light blue beads on each side. And then at the very top, you feed in your last cruciform bead and you, you tie a knot at the very top to make sure that it connects. You can snip the extra string if you have any, and there you have it, your prayer beads. One really cool thing about this is that the reason we use seven here for the light blue beads, is because seven is considered a spiritual perfection or spiritual completion. So that is why we have seven for each of those. And the invitatory bead here at the bottom, if you add that to all of these other beads, you get the total number of 33, which is the total number of years Jesus lived his earthly life. So now that you have your prayer beads, this is how you pray with them. Start with the cross bead, hold it between your fingers, and say the Lord's Prayer, or something like, in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Something to start out your praying. Then move on to the invitatory bead right here. Hold that one between your fingers. And you could say something like, Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Then the next one, you move on to the first cruciform bead. Here you enter the circle of prayer. Right? This, is the, this forms an entire circle. So here you're entering the circle. Hold on to that one as you say, Guide us waking, O Lord, and guard us sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. You will say that very same thing with every cruciform bead that you come to. So here we're just going to work our way around the circle. So then you start with each of the small weak beads. So with each of these, you can say something like, all shall be well, all shall be well, and all manner of things shall be well. That's how you do it. You just say the same thing for each of the weak beads and each of the cruciform beads. And it's suggested that you pray around this circle three times. The three times signifies the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You're supposed to go at a pretty slow pace. And this repetition allows you to become, it, it sort of becomes like a lullaby or um, a song of praise as you continue to repeat each of these statements. 
It also allows your mind to rest and your heart to become quiet and still. You can really use these prayer beads any way you want to, um, but it's helpful to say the same thing for each of the week's beads and each of the cruciform beads. Repeating it is comforting and it allows you to focus on God as you pray. I think Pal has sent along a few suggestions to your parents in an email about what kinds of prayers you can say as you pray with your prayer beads. And that's it. That's how you do it. I hope you have fun. I hope you can make your beads and use them whenever you need to. Hold on to them, bring them wherever you need to go. Um, it's a great way if you enjoy this kind of practice to pray to God and keep people close to your heart. Bye everybody. Thanks Creative Christian. As always my friends, I invite you to observe how God is working in your everyday life. Record your God observations in your St. Bart's journal or in a notebook. In what ways did you feel joy this week? God is all around us if we just pay attention. Okay St. Bart's kids, we've made it to the last part of our homily. You can say the words of our closing prayer with me as they appear on the screen, or you can just close your eyes and listen. Risen Lord, be present with us in all that we do. Be our companion in the way. Kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may know you as you are revealed in scripture and in the breaking of the bread. Grant this for the sake of your love. Amen. Thank you for joining me for our homily today, and I look forward to seeing you again next week. Peace be with you, St. Bart's kids.